And so conditional probability allows us to start describing things with a multiplication. Um, this symbol right here, you should read as and or intersection. Right. And so the way you can remember that is that if you have this symbol and you draw a horizontal line, it looks like an A, which is the first letter of and. So the probability that two events, A and B, will occur in sequence, right, the probability that A and B both happen, well, this is just going to be a rearrangement of the conditional probability statement. So this will be the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Right? And the way to remember that is to either memorize this or memorize the definition of conditional probability. And just to recall, for conditional probability, the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A and B. Right? So that's the upside down U symbol divided by the probability of A. And all we did was multiply both sides by the probability of A to give us this formula here. Now, if two events are independent, that simplifies our calculation a little bit. So the probability of A and B, since they're independent, using this multiplication rule, we get that's the probability of A times, here's where the independent comes from, since they're independent, the probability of B given A is just the probability of B. But to be able to use this rule right here, we need to know that the events are independent to begin with to be able to get a nice multiplication rule like that. And this simplified rule can be extended to any number of independent events. So if you have just, I don't know, 15 independent events and you look at when all the events occur at the same time, if they're all independent, it's just going to break up as a multiplication of all the products or all the pro probabilities. So if we look at this, you have two cards are selected from a standard deck without replacement. So we want to figure out what is the probability of selecting an ace and then a king. So the probability of selecting an ace and a king well, that's going to equal the probability of selecting an ace and then taking the probability of selecting a king given that an ace had already been selected, right? Because we're doing it without replacement, that should indicate that these are dependent events. So the probability of taking or selecting an ace, there's four aces, in a standard deck. Once you pick out that card, you're left with only 51 cards left, and there's still four kings left over. So if you remember your multiplication for fractions, that's gonna be 16 over, and you do 52 times 51, which gives us 2652. Throw that into your calculator, and that roughly gives us 0 0.006. Cool. So selecting an ace and then a king back to back has about a 0.6% likelihood of happening. Next, we want to calculate the probability that you flip a coin and get a tails. Then you roll a die and either roll a two or a four. So because you're doing these two things separately, doesn't matter what you get when you flip a coin, it's not going to impact what you get when you roll a die. So these two events are independent, which if we take the probability of getting a tails and then getting, I'm going to use squiggly brackets, either a two or a four, since they're independent, this and, we use this rule up here, tells us that it's the probability of flipping a tails times the probability of rolling a two or four, right? And then you just take care of calculating those two probabilities separately. Since there's only two sides to a coin, a tails 
is one out of two. And since you have six possible sides to a die, the probability of this event happening, there's only two things inside of the event, which simplifying this gives you one out of six, which is roughly 0.167. And now this is gonna be kind of tricky, um, but we wanna calculate the probability that at least two people in this class, let's say that there's 30, share the same exact birthday. So what we'll do is say E is going to be the event that two or more people have the same birthday. And so think about what the complement of that's going to be. All right, so if you look at all the possible events that are in E, well, you can have two people that have the same birthday three people that have the same birthday, so on, which means that the only event that's not included is that everybody has distinct birthdays, which amounts to no one has the same birthday. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the probability of E prime. So first, we're going to just choose one person at random. And since there's 365 days of the year, the probability that you choose one day out of the year is going to be 365 out of 365. Now, once that day has been selected, you move on to somebody else and choose their birthday. And it's not going to be exactly the same. So there's going to be only 364 possible days left out of the total of 365 days. Once you have those two selected, you choose a third person and they have a possibility of having 300 or one out of 363 remaining days out of the total number of 365. And this just keeps going. And you have 336 days left to choose from out of 365. And then lastly, that last person in the class, their birthday, there's 335 days left of the year, right? And so if you do 365 minus 335, there's going to be 30 numbers in the top. And then there's 30 copies of 365. If you take this multiplication, you get that this is roughly 0 0.2695. So the probability that in a class of 30, that no one has the same birthday is roughly about 27%. And so since we wanna figure out the event that two or more people have the same birthday, we're looking to find the probability of E, the event that we initially started with, which by that complement rule is going to be one minus the probability of the complement which is roughly one minus 0.2695, which gives us 0 0.7305. So in your general class of 30 people, there's about a 73% likelihood that at least two people have the same exact birthday.